M&M Candy's website complains each packet of milk chocolate M&M's should contain 24% blue, 14% brown, 16% green, 20% orange, 13% red, and 14% yellow M&M's. These are 1% significance level and the data that was actually observed by a researcher named Josh Madison to determine if M&M's really fill their bags of candy with these proportions. So we have the following counts which were obtained by this guy, Josh Madison. So this is what he observed when he grabbed a bunch of M&Ms from a bunch of bags, I assume, randomly selected, right? Now what we want to do in this problem is very clear. It says use a 1% significance level and the data by a researcher named Josh Madison to determine if, if M&Ms really fill their bags with these candy proportions. So this mention of proportions tells me that, and the fact that they say use a 1% significance level, those are hints that we're doing a hypothesis test about the proportions. Since there's going to be more than one proportion, we're going to be using the one-way chi-squared procedure in this problem. So first step of that process is to come up with a claim. So let's do that. We'll begin by expressing the claim and then we'll talk about how to get the data. So I'm going to leave the data there showing and I'm going to just work here on a sheet of paper working out the values like the claim, HOHA, all that stuff. Okay, so let's start with the claim. The claim for the problem is that we want to test to see if they really fill their bags with the proportions mentioned above. That means that what we're going to say is that the proportion of blue is equal to 24%, 0.24. The proportion of brown is equal to 14%, comma, the proportion dot 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 of green, and so on and so forth, all the way down to the proportion of yellow, right? So in the case of the proportion of yellow, it says 14%, so 0.14. So I'm not going to write it all out because we haven't done this problem here. I can always go back and refer to, right? So I don't need to write it all out since it's over there anyways. Let's start with HO though, but at least that's what we know our claim is saying. We're supposed to be testing to see if that's really in fact the correct proportions, right? Now HO would be if, you know, basically this idea that the claim is true. So the same as the claim here, so that blue is equal to 0.24, that the probability of brown, the proportion of brown is 0.14, comma, dot, 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 comma, the probability or proportion of yellow is equal to 14 percent. All right, then HA is going to be the statement that, you know, at least one of these differ from the other significantly. So I'm going to say, or at least one of these, at least one proportion differs from the claims, or from the claimed values, right? Claimed values. Okay, so that basically conveys the idea that, hey, one of these is off, one of these is not right. Of course, it would be, if one of them's off, then another one has to be off at least, right? But the idea is that at least one of these differ from the claimed uh, percentages by M&Ms. All right, so the claim HOHA are filled in for the problem. Our next step is going to have to be that we would do the data step, right? Now, the data step is quite involved. It's that step that we're going to use to evaluate all the stuff for the test statistic, right? The test statistic is, is simple. We just add up that last column, but getting that last column of the table is the issue. So what I want to do for the data step is to do all the observations written out, then all the expectations, et cetera, et cetera, right? So let's start out with all the observations. We have 481, 371, 483, 544, 372, and 369. So those are all the observations for the problem. Now from there, I want to do all the expectations. Now to do the expectations, remember we have to do the n for the problem, which we're going to get by totaling up this observation column, times each of the percentages that were listed. All right, so let's do that first. Let's get the n first, and then we'll do the multiplication to get the rest of the stuff. Okay, so we'll have 481 added to 371, added to 483, added to 544, added to 372, added to 369 is we get 2,620, 2,620. All right, now the expectations based on that. I'm actually going to store that value, 2,620, in my calculator as x, and I will use it now for the rest of the process here. In other words, I will simply say the expected value for blue is going to be 0.24 times x, 0.24 times x. 
And when I do that, I get 628.8, 628.8. And then I'll do 371, right? Sorry, not 371, forgive me. I wanna do uh, the percentage for the next category, which is brown, which is 14%, so 0.14 times the X value. And when I do that, I get 366.8. Okay, next category is green, so I'm gonna do the percentage for green. They say 16% is green, so 0.16 times X. And when I do that, I get 419.2. All right, and then I'll do the next category, which is orange. They say 20% of the group is orange. That'll be times X in our calculator, because that's where we stored N, and we get 524. Okay, and then we're gonna go 13% red, so 0.13 times X, and we get 340.6. And then lastly, the very last category, we're supposed to be 14% yellow, so 0.14 times X, 14% yellow, we get 366.8, 366.8. Okay, so there's all my expectations. It's a lot of work, but there they are. Now from there, the next step of the problem is to go ahead and do observed minus expected for every cell. So for each cell, I need to have O minus E, right? O minus E. All right, let's see what that comes out to be. So we'll do that by doing 481 minus 628.8. We get negative 147.8, then 371 minus 366.8, get 4.2, 483 minus 419.2, get 63.8, 544 minus 524, we get 20. 372 minus 340.6, 31.4, 30 and lastly, 369 minus 366.8, 366.8. We get the answer 2.2. Okay, so now from here, the next step of the process is to do observe minus expected squared. So I want to do observed minus expected quantity squared. All right, so we're going to square every value in that column there, every single one. So I'm just going to do 147.8 because we know that squaring a negative makes it positive, right? So we get a huge number, 21,844.84, 4.2 squared. We get the answer 17.64. 63.8 squared, 4,070.44, 20 squared, of course, is 400. 31.4 squared gives us 985.96. And finally, 2.2 squared, and that'll give us 4.84. Okay, now. Our next column of data, the most important column, is observed minus expected quantity squared divided by E. And this is the column that gives us our test data ultimately. So we need to calculate the observed minus expected column now by doing each of those divided by the expectations. So you can see this is a lot of work. This is the reason why this type of problem is often done with software, either a graphing calculator or by um, uh, by you know SPSS or SAS or something like that, or even a simple Excel spreadsheet makes this really a lot easier. I'm going to go ahead and give it uh, you know really only three decimal places. I'll give it four decimal places to be safe, but you don't need more than say three if you're going to round off to two decimal places here. But 17.64 divided by 366.8, we'll have 0.04809. Eight one, let's say. Okay. Then we're gonna have four zero seven zero point four four divided by four nineteen point two four nineteen point two. Of course, be very careful when you're grabbing your values from the table to make sure that you're not missing anything, right? You don't want to end up grabbing something you're not supposed to. So remember, it's four hundred divided by five twenty four. Four hundred divided by five twenty four. 
get 0 0.7634, 985.96 divided by 340. All it takes is one tiny typo error and you have it wrong, right? So just be careful, check your work. 2.8948, 8948. And lastly, 4.84 divided by uh, 366.8. I get the answer 0 0.01320. Okay, let's go ahead and add this up then and see what this gives us for our answer. So I have 34.7405. Plus 0 0.0481 plus 9.71 plus 0.7634 plus 2.8948 plus 0 0.01320. Okay, so we get the answer 48.17. And this is going to be our chi-squared test statistic. All right, so let's go now and talk about how to come up with the critical value. Okay, now that we have our test stat, we need to come up with our critical value. The chi-squared distribution looks a lot like the F-curve. It's this, you know, skewed distribution where we have a long skinny tail on the right-hand side. And our procedure is always going to be a right-tailed test. So for this problem, it's always right-tailed. And so what we're talking about is, of course, you know, it's a squared test statistic. So of course, you know, there's no um, there's no negative values. So the chi-squared number line, you know, goes um, from zero up to infinity, right? And what we're looking for here is the cutoff score for where we reject versus where we do not reject, right? And that cutoff score, of course, is a chi-squared value that uses the particular alpha for our problem. Like for example, here it's a 1% significance level. So we're going to have 0 0.01 as our significance level. And then we need the degrees of freedom. Now degrees of freedom for our problem is k minus 1, where k is the number of categories. So k is the number of categories, right? So the question is, how many categories did our problem have? Well, we actually had each of these categories, right? We had um, blue, brown, green, orange, red, and yellow, right? That was the way our table data was laid out, laid out for us. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six different categories. We take away one, we have five categories. So that is our formula for degrees of freedom. Okay, so we're going to go to our table now, the chi-square table. We're going to look up 0.01, and we're going to look up k minus 1, or in other words, 5. So we're going to go to the 0.01 column and look up the number 5 to find our critical value. Okay, so let's go there now and do that. Okay, so we're looking for a chi-squared value now. We're looking at 0.01 in the right tail with five degrees of freedom. You'll see that there is no 0.01 on this first page, so I'm going to go to the next one. And the next page is going to have the 0.01 with five degrees of freedom. So we're looking at 0.01 down to five degrees of freedom, and we find the answer 15.0863. Okay, so the value we found was 15.0863. All right, so that's our critical value. And if our chi-squared test statistic from the earlier work we did is larger than that, we will reject HL. So when we look at our work from before, we see that our chi-squared test stat was 48.17, 48.17. So this means that our chi-squared test stat is certainly in the rejection region, right? That's in the rejection region. So we're going to say that we reject HO and therefore support HA. And if that's the case, then we have to word our conclusion as follows, because our claim is actually HO. So we're going to say the sample data warrants a rejection of the claim. So the sample data, sample data warrants, or you can say the sample data allows us to reject the claim made by M&M's company. 
Okay, so basically the company claimed that the proportions of their different colors were laid out in this set of proportions, and we saw that our chi-squared test stat was too large to believe that that was true. Remember the idea behind this is very simple. If the observed observations, what we see, is different from what we expect to see under this um, hypothesis, right, this HO hypothesis, then what will happen is that these values on top will get very large, and as a result, our chi-squared test stat, since it's a cumulative sum, will be very large. In fact, if you look at the percentages here, you can see that most of these are rather small, these values, right? They're all pretty small. Even this one's pretty small. The real issue is here, right? This first category, the category of blue, it seems much higher than what it was supposed to be according to the um, layout of M&M's company. So that's really the key value that seems to be way off from the others. So the big contributing factors are this value, this value, and this value. They're the bulk of the test stat, and of course this is the overwhelming bulk of it, right? So because of that, uh, perhaps that's the reason why it failed to be true, or at least it seems like it's not true based on our sample data.